cat. So <coughs> let me back to my screen. So yesterday we were discussing about the angular JS and I showed you the example uh, how it works with the angular JS and all this stuff. So today uh, we'll see that uh, the hello world HTML yesterday we, we did right. So but I didn't show you that how to apply the style sheets and everything for that. So probably you can apply the style sheet. You can just put that in a hello world HTML itself. You can just write me two tags style style and then you can uh, <coughs> apply that. So So in the header itself is we generally write the style tags. For example, if you just want to write us some style, so CSS with columns. Uh, I said I said this basket uh, style sheet, right? So you can just do this uh, style sheets. Uh, probably you are creating a table or you are just creating anything. You can just create anything in the JS actually. So uh, you can just apply the styles, so you can just define a border or anything for this uh, HTML tags. Hello everyone, uh, Mahinder is uh, joining in a minute, uh, he's our trainer. So before that, uh, I just want to show, show the team uh, uh, on our uh, clipperlearning.com uh, site. Okay, so there are, there are some uh, uh, workshops going on. Uh, if you go to free workshops, right? So there, there are a couple of them. Uh, this is the one which we are uh, uh, going. Uh, this is the one which is going right now. And uh, big data analytics with our program that starts from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And uh, Python with uh, data science and it starts from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. And uh, Hadoop is from uh, 6 a.m. Uh, from this uh, Saturday, right? Saturday and then it uh, the full uh, program uh, starts from Monday. Okay. And a mini, a mini project on Python with the data science uh, starts from uh, next week. Okay, so in this uh, Python mini project, uh, we will we will show you what kind of um, you know uh, uh, in uh, how you can uh, you know uh, develop a project for your fourth year using Python with uh, data science. So you can include some uh, data science concepts into your uh, Python and do a project. Okay. This is uh, uh, okay. Yeah, I will Yeah. So just give me a minute. I will complete this. So many project okay. uh, we will do this uh, next week. Okay. Uh, but uh, for uh, some of these are uh, failed programs. Okay. So you have to uh, look at uh, handouts in the webinar, uh, coupons and uh, payment processing. Okay. We are uh, giving away some uh, coupons to students because uh, put up on the past. So, Hadoop, um, we are we are talking only two thousand rupees. Okay. So we, we are charging two thousand rupees for Hadoop. The initial pricing in the market is fifteen thousand rupees. So you have to use the coupon uh, Hadoop. Okay. This is only valid uh, till end of this week. End of this week, um, uh, valid. And uh, the Python with the data science also you can use the coupon uh, PDS two. So you have to make use of these coupons because we are working directly with your college management to give you these discounts. <coughs> okay, any questions you can go to clickforlearning.com and email, email us at info at clickforlearning.com or call on this number 
we are located based out of high tech city hyderabad uh, our office is in hazo mind space and uh, you know um, but uh, we we operate uh, uh, for uh, uh, students based out of uh, multiple locations right all over all over india we are doing webinars with this i will uh, hand over to mahinder uh, mahinder you can take take over. okay uh yeah, sorry about that. I just lost my power. So, we are talking about the style sheets, right? This is very simple, actually. It's not. It's not too complicated. You can just apply. Say, for example, I can just show you a quick example. Like, you know, as we discussed yesterday, you can just apply the color blue for this. You just title. Is a title we can just apply no i'm actually this is a title right so we cannot apply this because it is based in the browser head so we can just put another to say in it uh, maybe we can define a header calling h1 as a tag and we can just say again hello world so and you can apply the color blue to this so you can apply the color blue to this and then we can go to the <coughs> No, we can just go. We can just close. We have to close this size actually. Yes. So style H1 is just doing, which is giving uh, multiple annotations in the H1 tag. We uh, can just keep it. So you can just define a tag here or anywhere that this doesn't matter. So we just define it and then we can just go to hello over and HTML and we can just say. So now you see this is hello over this the title is header is printed in the blue color. This is the just applying the color to the HTML. This is called this actually. We are applying the colors to this. Using this, this is then actually you can just define the style of this H1 tag. So you can define like this on each and every tag you can apply the colors. As well as you can put it this entire stuff into an, another uh, separate file called as a .css file, which is a cascading style sheet. So you can up, you can use that file. You can refer that file into your world or HTML file, HTML file, and you can use those properties directly in any of the tag. So instead of writing uh, same code on each and every tag, so if you just put it in a separate file and use it in different places, you write once and you use it everywhere. So they kind of a word account. So write once and use anywhere. So this is how it is. Uh, HTML and CSS is tightly works together. So you can just make it that as. Once you define a CSS file, you can use in this uh, .html file, or you can use any with any other HTML file wherever you are referring to HTML uh, CSS file. So that's simple about this. So uh, yeah, this is what is that you can put in this. So next is the topic is actually today is. We are going to talk about web services. Yesterday we discussed about uh, Angular JS. I showed you the examples of Angular JS and how it works and everything, right? So let me open you uh, for a recap, recap for another guys. <coughs> Just open it in a uh, system edit. Okay, this is what we were discussing about. We are just typing in an admin and password. So it was just giving a message. If it is a valid username and password, it just says. And you click on the line, if the line is successful, it says successful. So, but now, but still this is, we are actually controlling that from this, we are hard coding that is actually. We are hard coding in our services, just saying that this is the admin password is. But the same information, if you want to store it in a database, you can store it in the database. You can create a bunch of users and store the information in the database and you can access to from the database. So, for the, how do you access the data in the database? So if you want to access the data, uh, data in the databases, for that you have to develop any, some kind of service. So you can just develop a service, we can just develop any services. So if you develop the service using the services, you can access that and you can, if you integrate the service into this uh, Angular JS, you can validate it and display the information whether it is a valid user or not. So basically how you, when you log into your Gmail accounts, right, when you put your username and password, uh, as soon as you click on that, it just says that whether you are a valid user or not, right? Similarly, we can do that. We can develop the similar kind of applications using this Angular JS with a combination of web services. So here we are specifically talking about uh, uh, emphasizing only the REST web services. 
because there are two types of web services actually. It's a SOA web based web services and a, a REST web services. So we are not going to talk it because that's a packed web services. It's a little difficult to, to implement it, and the, most of the uh, applications are uh, companies are moving towards the REST web services because REST web services are very easy to implement it, and it's very uh, user friendly. I mean, uh, very friendly. Like you know, what exactly the REST web services uh, <coughs> is actually? This is very easy. Implementation is very easy, and you can there is no uh, language barrier. I mean, the technology barrier. So you can use, you can develop it, and you can talk. It, uh, this RESTful web services can talk to any application, or any application is developed in a different technologies. So let me give you some brief introduction about what exactly the REST web services, web services are, uh, what, uh, why we need to use that, and how this uh, REST web services become very popular. So, and we'll see the example also at the end of this uh, session. So this RESTful web services are basically built on the REST architecture. So there is a REST architecture. It just simply works without any uh, language technology barrier. Like you no, know, there is no de dependence on any of the technology. So once you develop the web services and you can just give it to anyone, as long as the person is work, work, uh, satisfying the contract is defined in the web services, then they are well and good to communicate with the web services. So this REST architecture is every in the what we, how do we define this REST web services is that whatever we are just giving an information or just when they are submitting an information to us, so we just call it the entire thing as a resource. We just deal with the resources. It's not something like that oh, when you enter the form and just click on that submit, it just takes the data and post it and something like that. Okay? Here is just resource, you call it as a. So REST web, REST web services, why it has become very famous is the lightweight. What do you mean by the lightweight? So lightweight in the sense is not your measuring that uh, service. It's just lightweight in the sense is the implementation is very easy, and at the same time it works without any issues. So you can resolve it. It can talk to that, and the code wise is also very less code you write it. You don't need to write much of the code. The framework takes care about the rest of the stuff. So and the lightweight are highly scalable. Highly scalable in the sense is you can improve the performance with the rest of the websites. Because it's a lightweight, so you can just improve the performance. It's very scalable and maintainable. Maintainable is also very easy. Because the lines of, number of lines of code is very easy. And there is no you know, configuration tests or nothing like that. You don't have to do any configuration or anything for this rest of the web But so uh, when it comes to the other web services, the fat web services, right? We call it the fat web services. Uh, where you need to define in a .wsdl file, that is a registration file. You have to register your service and you are publish the service to that file and all those uh, hiccups are taken out from the restful web services. So we don't need to worry about any registration or anything. The only thing what you do is in REST web services, you define your service and you just publish your service saying that, hey guys, I said, look at this is I have the web services. If you want to, if you need any information, you can just talk to me and I'll just provide the information. So but the only thing is you have to submit, if you want to submit the information, you have to submit the information in a certain format. The format will be given to you when you are uh, registering with the web services. So this is how it is a REST web services have become very famous. And uh, this is basically where we use actually web services, uh, REST web services, is we commonly use uh, to create an APS for our web services, web-based web application. Uh, what exactly means to say, for example, you have a company, Say for example, uh, let's take an example of the uh, Dell and uh, Intel. So Dell is actually manufacturing the laptops, right? Just uh, creating the lap, uh, producing the laps, uh, laptops, and uh, but the Dell is not itself is the responsible for complete laptop because an uh, internal chip, uh, internal there is a chips, Intel chips. So Intel company is actually manufacturing Intel chips, Just producing it, providing it to uh, Intel chips. So, but these two companies, when you just access the Dell website and uh, access the Intel website, there are two separate uh, websites are there. So, but if you say, for example, if the Dell wants to order some other ch chipsets, so how do they do this? Do they go into uh, Intel website and just type it and uh, input the information subject it? They don't do that because they don't need to do that actually. Because they don't need to access uh, their website and uh, just uh, in the same way, if the Intel wants to access a uh, Dell resources, then Dell cannot come to, uh, Intel cannot come to the Dell website. So they have to communicate over the internet. So how do they communicate is? They simply expose their resources as well, web services. So when they expose the web services, these two companies can talk 
irrespective of the technology, how they, they built on their interface. Whether it's, for example, Intel might have built the interface on dot .NET technologies, assume that. And as a, whereas in a, uh, Dell is built their interface on the Java technologies. The two interfaces are different. There is no way that they could communicate with each other, right? So, but this is to remove this barrier. What they happened is they just developed an expose at the web servers. So when they expose the web services and Dell says that this is my web services, if you need any information using these web services, you can just get that information. So they provide, of course, they'll just provide a authentication and everything for the web services. It's just not a public, uh, not a public web services. So internal web services basically. So the company can call that web service and providing it, login and everything is successful, then just give the information to the Intel. And there is a the vice versa, Intel also provides the same information to the Dell. So there is nothing actually. They don't need to worry about they don't need to create any common interface and where they could enter, put the interface uh, information and just store it and take it out. So this simply is doing Dell simply just communicating without any technology barrier. So that's how the web services become very famous, very popular. Uh, so this we call it as a restful web services. So what exactly the restful web services again is a rest is it's a representation service basically we call it as <coughs> it's a representational state transfer transfer. So it's a, actually REST is a web standards based architecture and uses how does it this how these two companies are communicated. There must be in a, some protocol, right? So this protocol, they use the protocol for the rest of services in the HTTP protocol. So probably you, you know everybody, I mean most of you guys is accessing the web internet and everything, right? So we use HTTP and HTTPS, you know that, right? So these are the two protocols you can use, HTTP protocols. So for the data communication and what happens is this, this is actually the services revolves around the resources where every component, whatever the component, whatever the information they treated as in it is called it as in a resource and is accessed by the common interface. So this common interface is the common interfaces in the between these companies is web service. So this is uses the HTTP standard methods. But there should be some uh, guidelines to access this web service and everything, right? So and there is a protocol called HTTP we use it and it ha we have a bunch of methods in the HTTP. So we use those methods to communicate the web services. So this is a REST architecture is simple and when somebody is asked the question is the difference between the FAT service and the REST services, FAT services can only provide the support to the XML. So that, that the data, they share it with the different company in the format of, in the form of XML. But whereas the REST supports text format, JSON format or XML format. So this supports, this is, way, this is more popular because it, the number of, uh, of uh, representations is more comparatively other web services. So of course, so JSON is now the most popular format being used by in web services by uh, most of the companies because that's in a human readable form. So you can just read as a key and value phase. So we'll show you that example at the end of the session. So now, how they communicate it? For example, so as I said, that HTTP methods, right? HTTP methods are there are bunch of methods like you know. So for example, if the Intel wants to access uh, some of the information with the laptops or whatever the information, there is a resource that just, their point of view, their perspective is only the resource. So they're just going to access the resource. They simply issue a get request. So that when they issue the get request, uh, it just validates it. Uh, then Intel provides all the information what they need is. So maybe I can show you some examples how they make an end. Give me a second. Okay, this is how it usually happens between the communication between the companies. And this file is opening. This uh, seconds. Yeah, if you see the image here, we have a shopping cart and we have a customer, we have an article. All these are resources. We call it as a shopping cart itself resource, customer is a resource, article is a resource and all these are. So if you look at this, the shopping cart is 
sending in a get request, get slash article slash 451, 4501. This shopping cart is trying to access the article 4501 using a get request. This is an HTTP method get and the article is the resource name and the number is one of the unique number for this. So all these are actually, but there is a possibility that they do it, but these all these rest services are, uh, you know, works with a, with a URI. It's a unified resource locator. URI is basically it works with that. So they use as a unique ID for that, and uh, so they, if there is any conflict, then they just resolve it. So you have to provide all the time is a unique URL for that. You cannot use the same URL for the different resources to access the different resources. So this rest web, web services is actually just a collection of open protocols and standards and used for exchanging the data between applications or systems. You can exchange the application. As I said that you can exchange the information between the companies like you know, the uh, <coughs> systems uh, like Dell, so Dell system can talk to Intel or Intel system can talk to Dell. The system, the application system can talk. There is no human intervention is required there. So just simply they make a call and they write the program and that issues when the order is going. I mean, when for example, the Dell companies wants uh, require some of the chips. Intel chips, then simply make an order online and it just comes that it just send the information to the web services only. They don't, they are not going to access their interface and just go make an order. Simply send an, so instead of uh, when they are ordering that, they just go for a post method. So they just send us some information and post it and then just posting that, then the Intel just simply supplies that required information to this uh, Dell company. So this is how is the web services works is actually. We have a different, if you, here is actually mentioned only the get requests. This is only get request is only read only information. You cannot modify that resource information. So you can only just simply get the information and read it and you can display it. So whereas in the post method, you can submit the information just like you know, when you're signing up uh, from the website, you just enter the information and click on submit, right? That is going to be post information. You are posting the information. You are creating a resource yourself, an end resource. For example, you are signing up for the web application. So assume that the web application is using website, they export the web services. So to submit to the web services, you need to just provide all the information, like first name and last name and gender and then username and password and re-enter the password or something like that. When you enter the information, you click on submit, it make a call to the application and then just post the information there and create a resource and uh, the username and that password will be given to you. So then, like, then subsequently you can just uh, log into the web application, right? So that's how you can do with the web services. So probably you might have seen that when you change the password, nowadays the companies send a link to your email ID, right? So the companies, most of the companies is uh, just validating through the email. But why they are doing instead of just letting you to allow that uh, because to prevent that unauthorized access, so when they send a web request, so what they they, in, they include that some of the session key. That's a unique key to you. So when you click on that, that means the the, the website assumes that okay, the correct person is only the validated person is only clicking on that. So if somebody hack your web and uh, Gmail account or any account and click on that, that's a different story. That needs to be taken care of the other way. But that's not a story. That is the behind that scene. So. But now we are just talking about the correct way of doing this. Just sending the Paytm is, for example, you guys are using Paytm, right? So Paytm is when you change the password, just simply send an email, and when you click on that Paytm, uh, that link, it just display on the page and tells you to change the password. So you can change the password and you can log into that. Right? So that's how it is. The web services are very useful. You can use it for anything. You can get the information, you can post the information, you can update the information, or if you want to delete your uh, information from that, you can also use any web services. So, how do we do that? Is we have a different method, such to be methods. This get for get is provides only the, the resource, getting the resources. Put is basically we can use for the up, creating a new resource. It's updating basically. Put is so delete is basically to remove the resource. Post is just post the information. And we also others we have we have another uh, methods called options. But that is also supported operations. Whether this, support, this operation is supported by this web service or not, you can just check that. So this is uh, simply about the RESTful web services. Uh, let's see an example. Uh, okay, uh, what I'm doing, I just created a web service here, so I can just explain what. Okay, let's close this. 
So, say for example, I have an I just created a. Uh, I just created it. I'm just using a Spring REST example. This is a project I created just to demo it. I'm using a Spring REST services. This is actually very easy to demo. So we can just do this. Uh, so this REST controller is basically when you are submitting. Let's say for example you are going and uh, typing it into. You are opening a browser, and so I just created a greeting controller. This is my REST web service, and this REST controller is works based on the slash greeting. So when you go and type it, say for example, it's a HTTP, and the local host is my server because uh, the server is I'm running in the locally. So I can just say this uh, server is listening on the port number is. 8080 here. So I can. This is an inbuilt uh, server actually. The Spring Boot server. Probably you might have heard about the Spring Boot, right? So Spring Boot is using. Uh, you can use the deploy. You can run the uh, <coughs> web services without uh, having any external container like Tomcat or JBoss or anything. So let me show you that 80 and then say. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to access greeting. So, so the greeting, right? Yeah, greeting. So when I say greeting, click on the center, it will display information to me. Now you look at this. This is just displaying the information ID three and the content is hello world. So how did you get this information? You just simply type that greeting. So you type the greeting, and when you type that information and greeting, say this REST services calls a REST controller. So this identifies this how this web services is identified. Okay. So we, hello. So we can hello? hear you. Yeah. We can hear you. Is there any disconnect from my side? No, no. Go ahead. It is clear. Oh, there is some lag or anything? No, it is not. Uh, go go ahead. This uh, everything is good. Oh, okay, okay. So this is basically when you type something, and this is the user name. This is the basically the server URL, localhost eight zero, and you simply say greeting. So greeting, then there's a response you receive from the web services ID three and content hello world something. It's just hard coded. We are not going into the database or anything right now. So this is ID three and content hello world. Similarly, if I say, say for example, okay, I want to pass the name here along this. Uh, Maybe I can pass a name is uh, you can just uh, let's say for example John and just pass in the John and just pass in the name John and just say now you see that the response is slightly different because the ID is changed and this is hello John so whatever the your name you send it to that web services it just appended it just wish is greeting with an your name hello John similarly you can do that uh, the name you can just change it here so you can just pass uh, No, uh, probably Mary. So it's a Mary. The so ID is changing. So it's just wishing every time, just counting that number. So this the response is keep on changing. Similarly, they can just, just you know, uh, as I said, the Dell company use this in a similar kind of service, web services, and instead of name, they probably send the ID name or anything. Say for example, I needed an iPhone Intel chipset. So then, just what is the information? I need. A, I just want to access what is the configuration for the iFi interchips chipset. So when I type it, and it just display all the information that iFi processor related information in the web page. So there is no interface, nothing is required. We are just going to the regular browser and typing that information using the web services. So there is no critical, uh, typical user interface where you just go and type and click on search button and get any information, right? But This is how is the companies interact without creating any user interfaces to access their resources across the uh, over the internet actually. So this is how it is. The web services become very popular. There is no need to uh, create any common UI and where the companies can uh, put the information and store get the information. Other company take the information and something like that. This is straight away works. So this is a web services style of coding. So we'll just look at that web services. So this is again. See now you can just see. As I said, that Java we are going to use everywhere. Probably uh, most of the guys you know about the Java, right? 
So you just look at it. All these are Java methods and Java classes. Nothing much different from the web services. But the only thing is we are annotating some of the, the classes annotating. You know, uh, I hope you guys uh, know about the annotations in a Java, right? We just use annotations to annotate this class saying that this is my controller. So and the similarly, we just annotating the methods within it, some of the annotations using request mapping. And we are just passing the name. So you can pass the name with the greeting when you are calling the greeting web service. You can pass the name or if you don't pass the name, it simply takes the default value as a word and then name is an argument. And you can just create it. This is the increment and get. So you see, keep on increasing, in, uh, increasing the ID number. Probably you might observe, right? When I say John and I just got a four and when I say Mary, I got a five. So just name. This is simple greeting controller. And this is, uh, if you look at this, this is a simple uh, class, greeting class. And just creating greeting and get ID. This is a regular Java bin class. So that means you need to have an in-depth in knowledge of the Java. So Java is not just learning in your academic. Like, you know, you just learn, oh, I know how to write a program, factorial program, prime number program, and Fibonacci series. Oh, nah. when, you, when you are able to write the Fibonacci series or prime numbers or something like that, don't make an assumption that you are a good programmer or something like that. Those are the basic stuff, right? So if, if you want to become a good programmer, you need to understand each and every concept of the Java. So we have in a session, right? So for Java and uh, this Angular JS and the uh, web services. So I will be covering all most of the topics what we are in uh, what we use in a day-to-day -day programming industries, like the companies how they how they create the projects and how they use the programming. They don't use the programs the what you develop at the college, right? They know nobody is see even though most of the freshers getting questions on Fibonacci series and prime numbers. The intention of the companies to interview and uh, asking the questions on those. Uh, is just to test it with your logical thinking, the problem solving, not the program, okay? The Java program, whether you are able to write this program or not. That's not the intention of the companies. They only to see that how you logical, how good you are logical, and how good you resolve this issue. So those are the, they just analyze your programmatic uh, analysis skills, analytical skills, and as well as problem solving skills, and as well as logical thinking. So that's how it is. So those programs are not going to help you once you pass once you uh, uh, out of the college. So those programs are not going to be used anywhere in the companies, real time. Okay. So you have to be you have to think about you have to improve the logical thinking and you have to be on top of the each and every topic in the core Java. Core Java has a vast uh, information. It's, it's not just like you know if you know the how to write a class or how to write an object or something. That's not just the core Java. Okay. There are a bunch of information. If you just pay attention to the core Java classes, you'll be benefited a lot. Because I'm going to explain in the real-time scenarios. So when you're writing the program, why we need to write in such a way, and why we need to do that, and why the comp uh, how you implement that in the real time. And all those things is going to be explained next of the subsequent sessions. Okay. So that's how it's actually basically web services. And now, Mahindra. Hey, Mahinder, uh, let's take a break and uh, see if anyone has any questions. Okay, sure. So, uh, Pupuja is asking, is this class if you want to enter the username in database? So uh, sorry, your voice is not clear. I mean, let me take the question. Sorry. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I think I'm just uh, still in our spot. I just got a call back. Yeah, Mahinder is joining in a minute. Hold on, please. Yeah, Mahinder is joining. Okay. Uh, if uh, meanwhile, if anyone has any questions, uh, please uh, please let us know.
so uh, couple, couple of questions from the team uh, that uh, uh, do we get a certificate uh, no uh, you will not get a certificate because this is a free workshop uh, we are doing so in the free workshop we don't know who is coming who is uh, joining who is not joining so if you want to do a project a real live uh, project and also get a certificate uh, you you need to go for the uh, you need to go for a paid course so which is uh, if you go to courses angular js it uh, and you have to pay for the fee uh, for the course then uh, then you, you you will do a live uh, project with the trainer and you get all the programs coding and everything as we go forward okay so you uh, so the 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 live uh, course uh, will start from next week but uh, this we will uh, keep continuing we'll, we'll uh, sorry guys i uh, just lost i had some issues with the audio hello yes yes uh, we can hear you okay so uh, yeah I mean, you guys have some questions right right yeah sorry, okay just... i can just repeat. Uh, sorry, I will just go ahead. Just complete your uh, stuff, then I'll just take it. Okay. So, so I'm just explaining the team that uh, they will not get a certificate because uh, the one we are conducting is a free course, uh, which means we are not tracking the students uh, who is joining, uh, who is not joining. So we cannot provide a certificate for that. But uh, once you make a payment, uh, we will do the assessment and uh, we will give you the programming. Uh, uh, the code and everything to you and you have to do a live uh, project with us right so you have to go ahead and make a payment uh, right now we are offering a 50 percent discount right once you do that uh, we, we are kicking off the batch uh, from next week onwards so that in that batch uh, we will do a live project with you so that you can use that same project in your final year okay and we will also give you a certificate uh, uh, with the project you did so Mahinder, you can uh, uh, take over uh, and uh, the questions, uh, please ask me. Yeah, sure. Uh, that is okay. I'm just going through your, your questions. So before getting into the questions, so let me complete this uh, topic actually. So I was talking about the JSON format, right? So this is actually basically the JSON. So the way to display the information is this is a key and this is a value. And this is a key and this is a value. Something like that. Simple, right? It's just you can read it and uh, so this is the ID5 and the content is Hello Mary. So this is how you can just read all the information. So this is how it just display information. This is JSON and most of the time you see web services are using JSON format to communicate each other. So that's how it. Okay, now let's move on to the question panel. Okay, Pooja is asking some question. A status class, if you want to insert username in database, then what we have to do? Uh, good question, but this is not, you know, uh, you learn only the piece of cake, not completely. So there is a lot of uh, things you have to learn. I mean, you know, actually the, you have to learn the Java and as well as the web services. So there's an Angular JS is only the, the front end to display the user. Whether somebody is a, uh, in, I mean, somebody is a <coughs> entering the information into that fields. When they click on submit, you have to make a call to web service. The one we discussed. So through browser we are submitting, right? But is instead of browser URL, you have to submit when you click on that submit button. Then it makes a call to the server side program. So the server side is internally what happens is it just go and connect to the database. So the entire we have a service layer and DAO class and all those things. We use a different technologies there. But any technology you you use, the Java is important. Java is used everywhere, like you. The people talk about the Spring and Hibernate and all those uh, and JDBC and all those things, right? Everywhere the Java is must. If you know the Java, then you, it's, it's very easy for you to learn the remaining technologies. So it's a lot of it's a big process actually. So you have to make a call to the rest service and the rest services make a call to the database and they just carry that information and put it into the database and get back to say that it's successful. That's how it is going to be. So. It's not as straightforward that you can just depend something else and then you can directly put it in it. Okay. So the second question is, is Angular? Uh, I don't see the name of the person. Okay. Ash Amrin Ashria, I think. Uh, yeah. Is Angular JS used only in front end or 
uh, we can use it in the backend also. No, it's the Android this is only purely front-end web application. You can only use it for the user interfaces, creating mm -hmm. user interface. So if you want to communicate with the server, you have to create a web services for that. REST web services you can create and then it communicates the server and gets the data. Information as good asked, it just gets the same information from the database and display it, or else you can just submit the information to the database. Uh, can you please give me a tentative agenda for the coming classes? Uh, coming classes is actually this uh, is a 40 days course, right? This 40 days course is going to be covered by Core Java, AngularJS, and Web Services. So at the end of the course, the uh, 40 days, so you will be able to develop a small application where you could create an interface front end application and you can develop the web service and you can communicate with the database also. Database is not really mandatory for at this moment, but you can just, uh, at least you can just define some information at the server side, you can get that information and display it. You can validate the server side. Rather than doing a validation at the client side, you can just do the validation at server side. All those things will be covered. Core Java is a part of that. So this three will be help you out to build a simple application. We will we'll give you some applications, sir. but if, even if you attend the regular classes in the core Java, you will be able to do some real time programming. Like you know, the examples will be given and uh, will be uh, the, some, uh, the assignments will be given to you. So you have to develop them. So the next question is, Pooja is asking again question, in this program, why we use the Java code only? Uh, can we write any other programming language? Uh, in this program, is uh, means uh, the question is I mean not clear for me is actually so which program you are talking about uh, Puja maybe I mean Arvind could you please uh, unmute that Puja is Puja Puja yeah Hello. yeah. Uh, let, let me do that. Hold on, basically. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Pooja, if you have the question. Hello. Hello. Ah, good evening, sir. I am asking yeah. about phrase uh, like uh, greeting dot HTML. Something is there now. Mm -hmm. Uh, greeting oh, dot okay. uh, so previous program. Is, we use Java yeah, this, program. For why we use Java? We can use any other language like C, Angular dot JS. No, Angular JS. Uh, why we use uh, private dot greeting controller? Okay. Yeah, greeting controller is this right? This is the asset the web service. We are creating a web service and exposing the web services to the other parties outside the world. Like anybody can call the greeting. So and this is mostly built on the Java because the web, rest of the web services are you can just build on the Java. You can use another language also, but here we are the since class is explaining is talking about the Java, right? Java and Post, right? So that's why we use. Okay. You can use in a uh, probably dot net and all those things in that. You can just similarly develop the uh, Microsoft REST services or other services. We are talking about the Spring here. In Spring uses only the Java. So that's why it's a Java. And uh, you said that Angular. Angular is not a server-side technology. It's a client-side technology. Okay. Angular will only use it to create any user interfaces. Right? Okay. Is that clear? Okay. Again, yeah, I have one question. Uh, in uh -huh. Angular.js, we have all directories. Why we use, uh, again, controller.js? Uh, okay, good question. It's actually, these technologies follow some kind of, uh, uh, you know, Patterns. So, so, so. It's a decent pattern, we call it as a so model view controller. So because we just segregate the information. So for example, if you put it everything into the one file, then that's going to be clumsy and it's going to be hard to make it, right? So if you have a subreddit, mm -hmm. let's say for example, the view part is handled by one direct. Okay. So where you have a yes. view. It means the view means is you are typically using only the HTML tags to create your user interface. And once the, that, that is, the view is responsible to only the render the HTML page, that's all is that it, it only it knows about that. It doesn't know what is going to happen when you put information and click on submit. So when you put the information and click on the submit, so somebody has to carry that information, right? 
So the controller is takes care about that. It just carries the information from there to communicate with the server set. So server set again we use a technology, different technologies, right? So it just hand over that information to the server. So server is response based on that information and prepares the response. So and uh, uh, sorry, server is a response based on that request and prepares the response accordingly and send it back to that. So the controller is again prints back and displays the information to the user interface. So here is, if you look at that, view is a basically is a view, just simply view. What you see on the uh, browser is a, that's the view. And the information stored in it is a model. We discussed yesterday as a scope. Uh, yes. Yesterday, right? The scope is nothing but a model, I said. So the model is an object where you store the information. So these technologies nowadays is most of the technologies built on the OOPS concepts. Even if it's a client set or Java uh, server set, they use it. Uh, <coughs> sorry, they use it a OOPS concept. It's an object, object, object. Wherever you go, they talk about object, 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 and class. So that's how it's built on technologies that are developed on the OOPS concepts. So this is how actually exactly. Yeah. Any other question? Thank you. Sai Leka has a question, so I will unmute her. Sai Leka, so you can talk now. Sai Leka, go ahead and ask your question, please. Oh, it's an uh, agenda for, uh, okay, okay. I think she was asking about the agenda for next classes. Okay. okay. So I could see another question is, uh, and this web services is applicable to Amazon web services. Okay. <laughs> so in the market, if you go and if you are going to buy some phone, right, smartphone. So there are a bunch of smartphones are available. You can just a Samsung smartphone. That is also does the same thing what is IPL does, uh, iPhone does, right? So iPhone, Samsung, Intel, and so many brands are there. All these are what we call it as vendors, right? So the different vendors are producing different uh, smartphones, micro mics are different. They have most of the kind of phones as a features, but uh, along with that is a common features and they also have a uh, vendor specific features, like iPhone uh, gives some other extra features compared to the Samsung or uh, that's like. So similarly, when it comes to technology, web services, then we are talking about the rest web services, we are talking about only the plain web services. We are not uh, talking about any vendor specific web services. So here is, I talked about a Spring Web Services. I just showed the demo, right? So Amazon Web Services is similarly different. So you can use Amazon Web Service. So they just develop the web services, but they can just do some kind of implement, vendor kind of implementation to make the uh, programmer's life easy. So that's how is the vendor implementation. Amazon Web Services is also, yes, these are the web services you can use in Amazon also. You can deploy it in Amazon Web Server and you can call it as a web services. So play, but you need to add some of the vendor specific implementations. So they just create a package and they just publish that package. They call it as an Amazon Web Services Package API. So if you want to develop that, you can you just you can develop using a regular web services. So if you use the Amazon Web Service API, uh, what exactly happens is whatever the code you are actually going to use in a regular web services, you have to write the code, some of the boilerplate code, like where the same code will be repeated everywhere. You have to, there is no way you can skip that. But that is actually taken out from the program, uh, regular uh, programming and just handled by the Amazon. So, so that's why they released in a new API called Amazon Web Services. So if you use that API, you can simply call that API, you can just remove that boilerplate code from your <coughs> programming. So that's how it is going to be Amazon Web Services. You can call it as. So it's a basically a vendor. It's not, uh, they're just vendors. Uh, next question. Uh, the Pooja is asked about the question scope. I just explained scope of Angular JS in current industries. Okay. Uh, the Angular JS, as I said, is created by Google and is nowadays is a very popular. Is a, there are different versions. They are maintaining the different versions of Angular. Angular JS is most of the companies are using, and uh, I. Uh, Google is also created a, as a, another version of Angular 2 and Angular 4 is the extension of the Angular 2. So they're just going parallel. They keep on releasing every six months, they're releasing a newer version into these three streams actually. So they're maintaining three. So most of the companies are uh, using AngularJS uh, with already, uh, most of the companies use AngularJS 1 and they're still on the AngularJS, they're surviving on the still AngularJS. 
and some of the companies are migrating from the Angular JS one to Angular two. So, so now the market is very boom in, in the Angular JS because the way we are we are seeing registered the coding, the coding part is very easy. It reduces the number of lines code and as well as its development is it makes very development is very fast. So that's how it's useful is using Angular JS. So Angular JS applications is so many applications are there in Angular JS. Uh, <coughs> so we'll React replace Angular JS. Uh, as I said again, this is a vendor implementation. So when I ask a question, is iPhone replace a Samsung? If you say yes, here is also this is going to be yes. Because Samsung has its own features, iPhone has its own features. So you know, you, it's no way then you could replace that with one with another, right? They have just vendor implementation. Here, React JS might be performing better ways in the comparatively in Angular JS in some other way, but Angular JS might be over the React JS in some other way. So they have their own features, and is again created by React JS is Facebook and Angular JS is Google. They are competitors, right? So they're just using vendor implementation. They have different frameworks for themselves. They might have developed these projects for their internal purpose. Later on, they just uh, publish it in an open source project. So, letting the other people to use this in to create their own web applications. Uh, uh, yes, you can say that the Angular JS is in a framework. It's a structural framework where you could uh, create a dynamic web applications. Framework is because you are just going to fill your code it is, then it is just Angular framework is take care of the rest of the stuff. Like you know, uh, you are not we are not writing any code to uh, you know bind the information from the whatever you type it is binding to the user variable, right? That is Angular is taking care of it on behalf uh, on behalf of you. So that's how when you are typing something, it just immediately uh, printing in the browser uh, as we seen yesterday, right? So that is the Angular framework is a code. It's taking care of that. So we can just call it as Angular the structural framework. And yeah, that's all you can just make it as well. And the next question, I think that's the last question. Uh, if you have any questions related to the last three sessions, today's session or yesterday, or maybe day, day before yesterday, there's a code Java session, the first session, you can ask me now. Today we have a time action. We have another five, ten minutes, I guess. Right? Uh, Arun, you have anything to say? I mean, no question. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, let me share my screen. Um, uh, uh, there is one more question, is actually. I'm sorry. In this webinar, which version of Angular JS? We are using actually Angular JS one because uh, if I jump into the Angular JS two, it's very little difficult uh, to learn that because it's again it's a uh, the Angular two is developed with a type script, which is a super uh, super set of the JavaScript. So, if you learn that Angular JS one, then you can probably uh, you can very easily switch over to the Angular two or Angular four. Okay, I will. Yeah, you can. Use. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, thank you all for joining. And uh, from next week onwards, uh, we are starting the paid program. Uh, in the free free workshops uh, which we are doing right now, we don't give you the recording or we don't give you the certificate or any material as we go forward we will do a mini project also but we will not share any of that because uh, it is a, a free workshop right uh, and we don't want to share everything uh, uh, to i mean some students are joining uh, once in a while or some continuous right so that's why we are uh, moving into a paid program from next week onwards uh, wherein the fee is uh, we are give, giving a 50 percent discount of 5000 uh, rupees uh, you you can go ahead and buy it and then we will kick off uh, same time uh, say 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, from next week onwards right uh, so so you know if uh, in this one we will do a mini project in the paid one and we will share the material so that you can also execute the program programs offline uh, on your desktop or in your college also you can do that so but in the free one we, we are not sharing anything so you have to join learn it online and and uh, uh, get some overview if you have any questions uh, uh, you can uh, send it to info at clickforlearning.com or call on this number okay uh, 
and uh, so we don't see any questions uh, any more questions so i think uh, we, we are good and uh, 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 you can uh, you can raise your hand and we will let you speak uh, right so in the real, real program uh, in the paid one uh, it will be interactive so anyone uh, questions uh, you know they can talk and uh, you you know you don't have to type because there are too many people in this webinar so you you need to type your questions so that's a delay we we are having but in the paid one we we will have uh, uh, i think 15 to 20 people 20 students so that will be easy and uh, we will be able to split the teams into four different projects four or five different projects okay so five different mini projects so we, we will work work on a, a process Okay, now if anyone has any question, Manasa, she raised uh, uh, raise hand, so Manasa, you can talk now. Go ahead, go ahead Manasa. We, we can't hear you, Manasa. Okay, um, now uh, anyone else has any question? So, uh, Pooja, uh, Pooja just asked the same question again. Uh, can we have uh, previous class videos? No, we, we are not going to share in this uh, free, free workshop, right? Uh, so you, you have to join the full, full program paid program and then we, we can share you every day's uh, uh, video so that you can look at it and practice but not in this uh, free workshop so sorry about that okay uh, so with this uh, then uh, we will end this webinar and uh, we will meet uh, same time tomorrow and uh, if you have any questions uh, let us know uh, send us an email and we will work with you okay thank you all for joining this uh, webinar and uh, have a good night thank you guys